um, the stream project in conjunction with the sanitary project will get all of the sanitary lines, service lines, everything below ground so those will no longer be visible which will aesthetically make things better and will also protect those from getting washed out through high flow events and make it the way it should be. So um, I will let Eric Coberly with E.L. Robinson take over and Yeah, thank you. I'm Eric Coberly with E.L. Robinson. We, uh, we're doing the primary design on the project. Our focus is on the sanitary line and also the stormwater portion of the project where All Star is doing all the stream restoration portion of the project. Uh, like Ken said, basically the project begins on the stadium parking side of Willowdale Drive and it goes up from Willowdale up to Hoffman, basically between Richland and uh, Randolph Streets, crosses over Hoffman. There's a short segment that goes parallel to Hoffman between, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the streets now. Bradley and, I believe, yeah, Bradley and Hoffman. I had it, I had it written down there, yeah, I found it now, Bradley and Hoffman. Uh, that's that short stretch right in here. It continues on up, uh, to Stewart Street where it crosses over next to the auto repair. In that area we not only have the sewer line replacement, that's the area where there's quite a bit of uh, stormwater work that goes on in that area. Uh, as, as Ken mentioned, we're replacing all the clay line in this area for the, for the sanitary line, replacing with PVC, uh, replacing the laterals, getting everything buried underground. Uh, in terms of the, the stormwater, as far as the stormwater pipe goes, most of that work is, is in the area on the upper end around Stewart Street. Uh, most of that entails installing 48 inch diameter uh, hot HDPE or polyethylene it's plastic pipe. So most of it's 48 inch pipe up through there. I know you can't see it, we've got a, another slide that's, well, don't do it yet, but there's another slide we have that zooms in on that area, but basically we're trying to snake around uh, the auto repair to get back up into Popano Run, so we kind of have a strange path to get there in order to get into that part, and then on up there's also, on Cedarstone Street I think it is, there's also a culvert crossing in, in there where Popano goes under, underneath of it. Go ahead and zoom in. This is the first portion, and, and All Star will go in more into the stream restoration portion of this. But what we've tried to do on this slide, and again, I apologize for the, you know, the clarity, but the, the lime green line is the, the sanitary line, and, and what you see there in the kind of the, the greenish or aqua, whatever color that is, that is kind of the, the extent of where we're looking at the stream restoration work. So there is a fairly wide path that goes up through there where the the various backyards actually meet down in the Popano. There's, there's an area there that will be disturbed along with that sanitary line uh, installation where you see the stream, stream restoration work. Uh, but you can see where it it's, makes that turn. Go ahead to the next one. <clears throat> That's where it crosses, crosses Hoffman. There's an existing box culvert in Hoffman at that location. The stream kind of turns around and goes up towards Stewart there. That's the section you see going down the page. That's a replacement of the sanitary sewer, but we're also installing, I believe it's an 18 inch diameter HDPE stormwater system up that alley or that, you know, that kind of area as well. So that's an additional uh, stormwater system that goes, goes down the page there. Uh, as I said, up in this area here, you can see there's a 48 inch crossing of Stewart Street, I believe that's an 18 inch crossing of uh, Kingwood Drive, and the 48 goes in behind the repair shop and goes up and kind of fingers out in some 48 inch that ties into drop, drop inlets, which are basically big concrete boxes with grates on top of them to allow the drainage into them. Okay, so that, that's all predominantly 48 inch in that area. Uh, there is one short section of 36 where it enters into the stream, but for the most part, it's a fairly significant size uh, HDPE culvert. 
You know, I want to want to emphasize, and I think it's already been emphasized. This this is not a flood prevention project. It's it's more of a channelization of the stream to maximize the area capable of supporting you know rainfall. And the same way with the culverts. The culverts are designed. <coughs> It's kind of on a West Virginia DOH basis. West Virginia DOH does the culvert designs based on storms related to how much traffic is on them. So in this case, it's about a 10 year, a 10 year, 24 hour event. And the fact of the matter is that's basically as big of a, a culvert that we can get in most of these areas. Otherwise you'd, you'd have the culvert kind of sticking up out of the ground. So it's the 48 inches kind of maximum that we have, so it basically carries that uh, storm event that would be required by highways in this area. Um, can we talk a little bit about the schedule? Yeah, if you want to. Now as good a time as any. Yeah. You know, just just to let you know where we're at, I think Mike may have mentioned we are basically at the 50% stage in the design. Uh, we anticipate working through March and April finalizing the design. A lot of what we have to do now, we have a preliminary layout on everything. Uh, we still have a time that both both us and All Star probably needs to get out there again, take the final, or not final, but the preliminary set, go out and take a look and make sure we're, you know, is, is there something we can avoid? I mean, we had it mentioned there's some a line of large trees in an area. Can we avoid that? We're going to have to mitigate what we're going to have to do. So we're going to have to go through that process now and see if some minor tweaks can be made in order to to minimize some of the disturbance. In some cases, you know, we'll we'll go case by case basis on that. So that's what we're going to be doing up through uh, probably in April when we'll probably get close to being design final. At that time, we have some permitting uh, that will actually start before the end of the final design, but we have some permitting to do, particularly on the, the storm, or the, the channel. The channelization will be a, a permit. We'll have a NPDS, it's a West Virginia DEP stormwater permit, and then there'll be a health department permit involved with sanitary sewer. So there's at least three, three different permits and maybe one State 401s, is they going to make us do a 401 certification? Depends on how we the we So possibly one additional certification slice permit. So there could be up to four permits that have to be obtained during that process <clears throat> throughout the summer. Our hope and our goal is to get something, cons begin construction sometime in the fall. And as I think also Mike mentioned, I think we're looking at about a, probably about a six month construction season. So hopefully start in the fall, get, get the bulk of the work uh, underway and, and finish up in the spring with all the various plantings in the spring of uh, 24. That sound. Uh, one thing I did want to point out also in involving this work uh, there will be some easements required. Uh, our company is also in charge of obtaining those easements. It will be a, uh, for certain, it'll be a 20, 20 foot permanent easement for the sanitary sewer line. Uh, as far as a temporary easement for construction, I, that's probably going to be varying depending on the width of the channel disturbance. So it's probably going to be a, a lot by lot variation as far as how how wide that easement temporary will be. Uh, as part of this, everything that's disturbed has to be, you know, put back in place to equal to or better condition, revegetated, etc. And that, that will be in the contract documents. Anything I'm missing on the sanitary portion? We're trying to parallel the existing sanitary line very closely Correct. to the existing Correct. location. There, there's existing easements for that existing line, and, and we're going to try to stick with those as close as possible. But yeah, in, in most cases, we are very closely paralleling as it is. Like I said, if we tweak it a little bit and move it, that, that may, may change a little bit. But the way we set out to do the job, we were trying to parallel it as long as we weren't in, in some of the flow lines of the channelization of the of the channel itself, we did alter a few areas about you know we got in that particular case. But Ryan, I'll turn it over to you on the channels. Thanks, sir. 
Uh, my name is Ryan Ward. I'm an owner with All Star Ecology. Uh, we're kind of local here between Morgantown and Fairmont. And uh, EL brought us on to help with the stream uh, restoration portion of this. And uh, it's kind of an interesting project for us. It, it presents its own set of challenges being an urban stream like it is. There's a, there's a ton of constraints and uh, issues, and uh, that's as good as we can do so that we can work around. So uh, we kind of set out here. Um, Basically, you know, you have this uh, channelized stream or this tight stream now. It's it's got eroding banks. It's it's confined. We don't have a lot of room to spread any water out. Um, so, we, we what we wanted to do is as we come down, we wanted to try to uh, give it some room, some extra capacity down low, equal what the channel is now. We didn't want to raise the bed of the channel up that would could create any higher water problems. We wanted to make sure everything we did made it better. You know, if not perfect, at least it's better than what it is now. Um, so we kind of, uh, we went through a, a, a system where we basically give it a little bit of flood plone area down relative to the new channel. We wanted to give the kind of a two-stage channel so it has a low flow channel where it could have some better aquatic features, habitat, look nice, but then it has a higher stage channel that can carry as much flood water as we can fit in there at the time to get down the, down the valley. So. So kind of, this is a, we, we stole the graphic here, but it's basically what we're going to do is we're going to take an existing channel and we want to excavate around the channel a little bit just to give it more space like we were saying. Uh, this graphic shows the channel moving over. We tried to keep it in the same place as much as we can um, just because we did not want to move the actual uh, channel itself. Um, there's a few situations where we did because of uh, it's not in a good spot or it wouldn't work with the sewer line as much as we wanted it to, but uh, trying to give it that extra capacity at a, at a low flow, uh, or at a high flow to, to, to keep the water away from any kind of structures and keep it low. Um, we did come up to, you know, as part of our stream design, um, when we start permitting with the Corps of Engineers, they want us to use a, a good reference stream uh, to base our design on. We picked the stream up, up in, uh, outside of Morgantown here in Tom's Run. It's kind of a high step pool boulder stream. Um, in reality, this is what we're trying to build. They never quite look as great as the nat nature's initially. You got to give them time. But uh, we used a stable uh, B-type stream out there. Go ahead, Dane. And we wanted to show some, like, these are some projects that we've done as a company that show kind of befores and after. This was actually a, a very similar situation. It was a pipeline crossing in Doddridge County. And we used uh, these rock step pools. Go ahead to stabilize those banks after it was done, and we gave it that little flood plane, mini flood plane channel along the side of the stream. Um, here's a piece of property we actually, uh, well, that's the same place, isn't it? I thought it was different. It's just another example. The stream was really wide. It's a wider stream than what you have in Popano Run. Popano Run's a little deeper and narrower. This was kind of a stream that was getting wider, but the same type of thing. We used, uh, these are a little bit, these are rock cross veins and rock seals that we used to kind of keep that energy into the center of the channel. It makes little pools instead of flooding real wide and uh, dissipates its energy that way so it's not erosive. Um, so one of the things we have in our design here is, is, is you're taking this channel, you know, historically if we could travel back before Morgantown what Popano Run would look like might, is not a great restoration goal for us. So we kind of realized, you know, we don't have that room for the stream to move back and forth. You're going to dissipate energy by having channels that go down it. And this is one that we did, this is an extra up near Davis, where you end up getting these kind of pulls and steps as you go up the channel. That dissipates energy when the flow goes down and so it doesn't eat the banks of the channel out. Um, this is actually, this is the one I thought earlier, this is a property we own where we did a stream restoration project and it had to get through the old farmstead and around a house and we ran out of space and we had to do the same thing where if you go to the next one, we basically give it, you get a small floodplain along it and then steps down the channel um, to get the stream, you know, and, and not take away from the house or, you know, not have to mess with the house, so go ahead. Um, the types of structures we used to do that, we use rock and log seals. This project here is um, Preston County up by the uh, prison. Uh, you know, you have these rock drops, uh, log seals, rock drops. We kind of alternate them around, mix it up to get some various looks on it. Um, you can see from our general photos, when you take them in the spring, they look a lot better than in the wintertime. But 
Um, here's one that's, like I said, log and rock drops coming down. It's a lot steeper stream than anything we're dealing with at Popano, I believe. But it's the same type of principle we're trying to do is you create these step pools to dissipate energy because you don't have room to spread out floodwaters um, like you would if, if you had a, you know, a non-urban system to deal with. Um, another structure we propose, we've got kind of working into our plans. We want to keep some variety in the stream. It, it just for it's mainly aesthetics, and it looks a little bit better than just having these uh, sills and steps. We use these things; they're called a rock and roll structure. And they're made with rocks and logs, and they kind of get you this uh, cascade look that zigzags back and forth. Um, and it's just kind of an aesthetics. It's, it breaks up the outline and makes the stream look better, and it provides for that same bank stability and function. Okay. Um, some other areas, um, didn't have a very great picture of on our server of this, but we use like a, a boulder toe protection, trying to avoid things like gabion baskets and riprap, you know, things that are really unnatural, trying to keep a natural look to it. We use boulders along the toes to, uh, to provide some of that bank protection in areas where you might not have room to fully dissipate the energy you think is going to be there, or maybe it's a steep slope where you're going to have other constraints. So this, we, we have boulder toes uh, proposed in some areas. And then uh, this kind of shows what it looks like when you get built in, like, uh, like Eric was mentioning earlier, like there's going to be a level of disturbance that goes with this. And uh, it it's, can be a messy pro process getting going, but it all looks much better in the end, um, especially this time of year. We, got, we have crews out working, to, to, well, I don't know if they were out today, but they were out yesterday and they were like, yeah, it's muddy. <laughs> and, uh, but as you go along, we'll put this matting, uh, core matting along the banks to provide some stability, initial cover and stability while you get your vegetation to, re to regrow in it. And then, uh, go ahead. And then eventually, uh, we're still a little bit early in the planning stage of exactly what trees and what species we want to plant yet and where we're going to put everything. But we kind of use, the DNR has a planting tool that we often use that says, hey, this is what you, would be great in your county and the settings. Um, as a biologist, I can do that too, but I just use the DNRs. Um, but we're gonna come in with some trees and some shrubs. We'll have understory trees and shrubs and then an herbaceous layer, trying to get something for um, pollinator type uh, activity and for the shading of the stream and the stream bank protection. Um, we're, we'll probably bring in a larger stock. Um, we do a lot of restoration projects on farms and we come in with little seedlings, but this being an urban setting, we wanna try to bring in some bigger trees initially to, to help with the aesthetics of the project. And because we're gonna have to take out some large trees, we wanna make sure we're trying to get that replaced as soon as possible. So that's the end we have. So Eric, you have, I mean, next thing here, we're gonna go over. Yeah, I kind of blew through the project schedule on the, the agenda and, and some of the next steps there, so I guess we can, yeah, sorry. I guess at this point we can open it up for any questions that you may have. We'll try to try to answer them best we can. Yes, sir. For this gentleman, uh, I live on Randolph. Um, where at? I live on Randolph Road. Randolph, okay. Pretty much dead center of the road between Hoffman and Willow. In 2000, I wanted to add on to my house. Well, I was put into this floodplain, and they were going to make me, they were, they were not going to allow me to build my basement, and I went through all this rigmarole with the city. I finally started writing letters to every entity that had anything to do with water, <laughs> and I got a letter from the Army Corps engineers who started this whole thing that it would not rise six feet over the bed in the back of my property, which never even put it on my property. Now the opposing bank was lower. Now, having seen all these wonderful streams you're showing us, where did this water come from to feed these streams? Because I'll tell you what, Pompano starts at the top of the hill. When it stops raining up there, the stream drops almost instantly. Mm -hmm. It's not like it comes out of the mountains. There used to be a frog pond up there off of one of the side, Lewis Street or one of those side streets. They drained it and built a condo over top of it. All right, so definitely that's one of the challenges that we deal with in this project is you have a lot flashier streams than what you would deal with in a natural setting. So if you were dealing with a stream with a forested watershed, the time for that water to come down is a lot slower than 
hitting a parking lot and coming down. Um, it is going to, when you get in these upper headwater streams too, it's, um, you know, we, we deal with a lot of different projects. Some projects you're lower where you're like, hey, a, a whole, you know, hey, we got eight inches of rain coming over 24 hours. Well, that's going to flood this project, but I'm on a small enough stream up in the hills that I never see that because it's slow enough. But then you might get a half an inch of rain in 20 minutes that floods these small streams that doesn't affect the big streams as much. And I think that's what we're going to be dealing with here. Who maintains that stream? So, okay. that, that will go back to when I, was, when I was building on a city engineer's assistant came out to my house and I'd had a guy with the backhoe working another question I, I, I understand you're only 50 percent with your design work and whatnot but when you're coming downstream when you hit the road that eight foot culvert that's there is that going to change on Willowdale on Willowdale no okay so I can redo landscaping there this year and not have an issue yeah, I would. I would. We're not planning on doing any work back there in the back. There's some sewer that will come down. There is some sewer work there that will come between your house where the box culvert currently runs. Mm -hmm. The plan is to upgrade the sewer back to the uh, interceptor line back there behind you. But you're not going to be excavating through there or anything like that, are you? Yes. Oh, yeah. You will. Yeah. yeah. Sewer line, not well, no storm upgrades. Yeah. There will be sewer line upgrade. Right. Sewer line replacement. Okay. I'll hold off on the landscape. So I'll hold off on yeah, the landscape. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what about the job on, on Willowdale Road itself? I know that's a state road, it's a city road, and all the bureaucratic BS that goes with that, but you got an eight foot wide, five foot high culvert there, and an 18 inch drop on both sides. It still floods the road. It eventually goes down, but if it was a two foot drop, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I would think it would drop a little faster. Is there any way we can get I, bigger drops there? I, I've talked to people about that. I'll, I'll see what I can do with the DOH. I'll bring it. I'll reach out to them again. I appreciate it. Yeah. Not return phone call. Uh, I've had better luck recently. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi there. Uh, I live on Amherst. I was curious, how wide is that stream going to be when it's all done and said? And also, how many of those trees are going to come out as you do all of this work there? There's the really tall trees along the existing stream. How about this? Hang on. Hold on a second. Let me yeah. refresh myself here. So the, the stream itself is not super wide. I think it was like 12 feet or so, yeah. 10 to 12 feet of the, of the channel. And then we had a little bit wider, I think up to 30 feet was the max, depending on, but counting the, the stream, so there'd be 20 more feet, maybe 10 either side of that graded out. And uh, I, I can't speak without looking exactly where we're at on the trees, but there's going to be a pretty good swath of trees got to come down through there. And that's gonna decide where some of the replacements and stuff got to go back in as well to, to help that. Well, he's my neighbor. We both live on Amherst. Amherst, okay. And we have had some pretty problems, but is there, is there going to be, I know there's going to be a new sanitary store. And then is there going to be a stormwater pipe on top of that? No. So we'll just have the sanitary sewer below the stream and the stream. And the stream. Okay. Well, over the years, I've lost a lot of my yard because of that. But there are pine trees, and of course we're familiar with those. Yep. <laughs> the existing pine trees that are there, can you save those and keep them? This is up close to Stewart where the pine trees have been eroded and are leaning. I, I, doubt. I, I doubt so. It's, yeah. uh, there's pretty, the ones, that, if it's where I'm thinking of in yeah. the spot, I mean, a lot of them are already even starting to lean, right? They, they are and have in the past. The only reason I say that is because, and I don't know what his opinion are of those trees, but they, Stewart Street has so much traffic now. The noise is so bad sometimes. Those trees block that sound. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's something we can consider as we develop the planting plan of some, some that visual and, and noise screen. I think that's a, it's something I hadn't thought of and it's a good point well, to bring when, up. When we originally <laughs> talked a few years ago, yeah. that, that we didn't have that noise. Now that Kroger's and everything has been built and especially everything on top of that hill. I was told for years that the top of that hill would never be developed because there's no sewage. Right. And, and so... I believe when we first talked it was because the trees were, it fell. Yes, it did. Your, 
those things might be to the point where they need to come down and, and be replaced with something. Okay, hopefully you can put something in there fast growing and that would so, walk. Yeah, we can, that's something we can consider. Like I said, I had not, but it's a great point and we'll look into that as we develop a specific planting plan of where the trees and stuff are gonna get replaced. I think that's something we can bring in. So my existing sewer line, sanitary sewer from my house will go into a new line under the creek. Correct. Where, where, yeah, yeah, thereabouts. It, it will be one side of the, road of the stream at that location. Which my rain spouts also dump in there. Those will, those will be discharged to the stream. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, well good luck on this. Um, yeah. I haven't really had any flooding other than the fact of losing my bank. Yeah. And they're, they're going to take care of that with the stream bank stabilization. Good. Thank you. Along Randolph, where the sewer lines cross the stream, how do we drop those down to the new line? Do you come up in my yard and dig up and drop the line in my yard? So, it, to some point, yes. The, the new line is getting, the new main is getting installed at a deeper depth, which will allow us to go beneath the yeah, bottom my, of the stream. My already two or three feet above the stream. So, so yeah, so there'll be, there'll be a, a, a clean out assembly installed um, Typically, we try to get those at the property line. It's gonna vary here with the location of the stream, but yeah, we'll have to come back to a certain point on the property. Yeah, because it's about six feet from my bank to get to the stream bottom, the bed. Yeah. So My then, pipe's a few feet off the stream now. All, all that will be buried and protected. And the next question, where do I go get printouts of these maps? Um, we can make these available. Uh, it's, I don't know if we have anything really at 50% available, but throughout the process, progress or project, we'll, we should be able to make them available. Um, okay. Soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can do a PDF of them or I can email you a PDF. Is it going to have contain the sizes of pipes and stuff on this information? Yes. Yes. Because I'd yeah. like to study that. Yeah, everything will be there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hoffman and I just wanted to make sure I understood the that portion of what will be affected is the stormwater system going to be underground or is it going to be like an open creek going down through the back of my yard I'm the little stone house that the tree fell on it, it, <laughs> that stands out to people it, it will be a pipe it'll, it'll be, be a pipe underground a pipe it will allow you to have your backyard back okay so because I had just planted some shrubs so I'm going to move those out of the way until this is done think, then. yeah so <laughs> okay so yeah the idea is to get all of uh, the majority of that stream that runs through the backyard uh -huh. when it gets a decent amount of rain yeah get it into some inlets and some piping okay and, Sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate this meeting. Thank you. Yes, sir. How much I and I do you think you're going to reduce? And do you also think you're going to reduce some of the water quality with the fecal you might remove from the stream and leaking pipes? There, there's a couple formulas that I'm sure EL could run on this length of pipe and this size to, to come up with an idea of how much inflow where this line is um, I, I guess suffering from <laughs> but uh, that, that's, a, that's a good thing that I would definitely like to run some calculations on. I don't think the form, I don't think the formula the typical formula will do this one justice based upon the fact it's a clay line and the age of the clay line the proximity of the stream. Yeah, and the, yeah, the, all the factors involved here, this has got just a tremendous amount of I and I. So, I mean, the, the reduction is going to be, you know, tremendous between that and installing a brand new tight PVC line. And then water quality. I mean, yeah. You're, we're going to do nothing but improve the, the stream quality up through there, stabilizing the bottom and the banks. And yeah, yeah th this is the worst of the worst type of condition for a clay line age and, lo and location next to a stream. It's, it's the worst of the worst. Any other questions or? Where does this clay line speak of? Pardon? This clay line you speak of, where is that at? The clay line is the existing sanitary line all the way pretty much parallel on that lime green line. That's where the, the current clay sanitary is. 
That was abandoned a couple years back. I thought we established that earlier. But only a portion of it was abandoned. The main line is still there. There was only a little portion was abandoned. Okay. That must be what I'm familiar with. Then. Yeah, the rest of it's still, it's still there functioning. Okay. Sort of functions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use that I loose. <laughs> I always replaced it. Late 80s. Very, very, very little PVC in that area. Yeah, okay. So yes. Yeah. So if I have clay line that goes from Sorry. my storm drains, like off my gutters, That's what we were talking about. through my yard yes. uh, to the, the creek, will those be? If it's a storm line, we'll pick it will be picked up in the stream channel. We're not replacing any individual right. storm lines. Okay. It will just tie into the the okay. channel that's going to be constructed. Okay. And then sanitary we'll try to stick with as close to the property line as possible with the clean out. It will get new to the clean out and then from the clean out to the house will remain whatever the the material is. It's in pretty bad shape. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Are there any that drains up along the window itself going to be repaired, looked at, fixed, or anything? So we, we, they've evaluated the crossing beneath Willowdale. Um, we weren't looking at the street itself as part of this. So I could get some bigger drops in to help them. I'm going to see what I can do. <laughs> the side, the water doesn't even hit the side. On, on both the end lines. Uh -huh. it, it comes all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can get done. I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> Will this be a Davis Bacon wage fund? I believe, according to the ARPA, it will be. Yeah, it's ARPA funds. funding. Yes. <clears throat> Anything else? We, we aim to have uh, another. Meaning, um, I'm being told we'll be pretty close to 90%, um, as he was saying, March, April. So we'll, we'll definitely have another meeting before anything goes out to bid or... And at that point, I assume, and I don't want to speak for you, but at that time, we'll lay out some plans and yeah. be available for viewing. Yeah. How do you get your equipment in and out of there and all the materials? And <laughs> that's going to be means and methods on whomever wins the bid. They're going to have to figure that out with the property owners, and it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Well, this is quite an undertaking. Though. Yeah, it definitely is. I I've been involved in a few stream projects, and it's never easy to get your material and access up or down. So. Uh, there's actually a decent amount of room here to work in, but what he's saying is we're all going to be partners in this project. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to get to know each other very well. It, it is, and and it's going to be ugly. And I would not tell you that you won't be happy. I mean, you or you're, you're there's going to be times you're going to be upset because of the way your property looks. But every job I've ever been on, we always get managed to work through it, get the restoration done, get the grass growing. It will come back. It, it just takes a little time. You have to adopt Pennsylvania Dance Slow years ago for how it is. Temporary inconvenience, permanent improvement. <laughs> yeah. And I, I will also say we have, or will have, during construction, uh, we're also in charge of the construction administration and having an on-site representative. So there will be an on-site rep there at all times inspecting the work that's being done by the contractor. So there will be somebody out there if there's issues. He's my eyes and ears out there, he or she, or is my eyes and ears out there as far as what's going on. And we'll try to resolve everything as quickly as we can possibly resolve. Well, thank you all for coming this evening. We really appreciate your participation. 
It's been great. The last time we did this, it wasn't so great. We didn't have much participation. So Ben, note that. <laughs> so again, and and you know, feel free, uh, Ken Hacker. He's will. He's always available. Um, you can leave him a message. We're going to have this up on our website. We'll get PDFs up on the website. You can go on. You can print them out, and and look it all over. Uh, you won't put your cell number. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that I haven't met yet, uh, I give you my, my card, email address, and my direct lines on there. So feel free to reach out. Yeah. Okay. So you have it there as well. But uh, I appreciate your guys' time, and, and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you all.